Now, the question that someone's going to ask in about nine seconds is, can I go look at the code of these, those older versions? And the answer is not yet. In trying to get everything working, that was one of the features that we got to cut in order to make this happen. That will happen soon. You'll be able to click on here and see what the older version did. But what you can do is you can activate for production a previous version of your application, which means if you, you, you develop stuff, you deploy it, it's really cool. Um, you then make a change and something breaks, you can actually roll the production release or the, or the copy that everyone is running back to the stable version while you're fixing the problems. So there's a, th this hasn't been available before and it's sort of caused some problems. We're really excited to have this. It's going to make my life a lot easier. Um, there's some behavior um, with which version is production that I want to explain. Um, if the top of your stack here, if the newest version is marked as production and you hit publish, the version that you are now publishing will be deployed as production as well. So if, if you're at the top of the version stack and you publish, production will stay at the new top of the version stack. If you have rolled back uh, to a previous release, I'm going to go ahead and click this here, and, and, and it's in the middle of your stack, that version will stay production until you move it back to the top of the stack or any other version. And this, this allows you to quickly deploy applications like you have in previous to, to the release of this function, but allows you to develop in a developer mode if you would like. This gives you the ability to improve your application without having to break it for everyone that's currently using it as, as, if you make any mistakes <coughs> as you do it. Is there any commenting in there so I can actually have comments about what did I do with each version? It's half there, you just can't quite see it yet. It's being hidden. The back end system has the ability to add a note for each of the versions. Um, I, it's not exposed yet. That will be coming soon. So, so the question is, is how do you go and change the list of domains that you want your application to change on so that the right thing shows up in the little box inside of Azigo Lite? The answer is in the dispatch block. Um, you want to add domain space and then in quotes the domain that you want to fire on. If it's not there, it won't ever show up in the other one no matter caching or anything else. So um, come, come find me afterwards and I can look at and help you with your particular problem. And that goes for anyone. If you're, if you're having issues and, and you want to understand what's going on, come find me today um, in, in a break or in the back of the room and I'll, I'll help you with whatever your problem is. So no one's asked the question yet, but if you have some, an older version marked as production, how do you test your newest one? Um, underneath deployment, there's a test option and it will give you a bookmarklet or an information card <coughs> that will trigger the development copy of your application. The development copy is always the top copy on the stack. So the, the most recent version that you have published is available as a development card or via the development bookmarklet. It will run the newest copy regardless of what the production copy and all your users are currently using. So if you want, if you have an application that's working and you want to add some new features and you don't want to be live publishing all along the way, the best way to do that is simply publish a copy that works that's identical to the previous copy and then activate the one version previous. That way they're still on a production release, they're still getting code that works, and then as you publish that, that production marker will stay on the version that, that, that is a known good release. You can use the development card or the development bookmarklet to iterate and do your development to add the newer features. As soon as you're happy with the way that it works, you can then in one click move the production pointer up to the top of the stack and instantly deploy your new features to the users of your application. Are there any questions about versioning? Feedback. On that second bookmark, but when you guys, uh, can you add like test or something in parentheses so if I drag it up, I know that's the test one versus the real one? Yes, good point. So we add dev to the card name here so that you can see it. It's not in the image, but in, in a Zigo Lite, you'll see dev in the, in the name of the card as you select it. We'll add that. So, so Scott's suggestion was that we add some sort of uh, text automatically in the name of the bookmark, but to make it easy to recognize. One of the things that you'll see up here, this is the text of the bookmark with itself. And you'll see Kinetics app version dev up there. And that's the flag to our system that what you want is the dev copy instead of production. If that is missing, it will serve production. And that way you get exactly what, you know, all the users that already have apps deployed and that use the, the cards and the browser extensions that are already deployed will get what they expect. Any questions? You're just stunned by it signed into silence with how cool this is. Yes? So uh, our bookmark was your primary tool for debugging. Um, cards are pretty easy to use too, I find, because it's so easy to go in and say, yes, make me one, load it into the card selector and use it. 
Bookmarklets have the disadvantage of having to be able to click on them every time you want the behavior to happen. Sometimes that helps for debugging, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and so I use both cards and bookmarklets in my debugging, sometimes together, depending on the complexity of the application I'm debugging. And what, what does the rest button? of the debug workflow look like? Do you just use Firebug? Wait, getting to that next. So the question was, is what is the rest of the debug workflow? What else can you do to help uh, debug your applications? And that's actually coming up next. But before we talk about debugging, I want to talk about ways that you can cause yourself serious problems. Um, while giving the, the, the power to do some pretty incredible things through JavaScript applications or, or JavaScript emits in applications. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, uh, talk about emitting JavaScript directly. We have actions to do some really cool things within the kinetics language, but if you're pushing the barriers and there's something that you're doing that we don't have support for yet, we want you to be able to bleed through to the ugly stuff into the underlying JavaScript layer so that you can actually produce the advanced application that you need to. And so, the simple way of doing that is using an emit statement. This is a, a good example of using an emit statement. Um, this simply calls JavaScript alert, which I realize we all hate, but it's the simplest uh, JavaScript expression that I could display. The, you'll see this action down here that, it's, that is the no op action. That does exactly what it sounds like. It simply does nothing, but it's a valid action. If you don't declare an action in the, into the language, then, then it's an invalid rule. And so this action needs to be in there if, if what you're doing is emitting JavaScript. It's common to emit JavaScript and run an action as part of, uh, uh, so that they can work together on what's doing. And we saw that example in annotate search results. You emit a JavaScript function to have the behavior that you want, and then you call a kinetics action that actually uses that emitted JavaScript. So that's a relatively common practice in our language as well. So anything in here is, is JavaScript. And because of the here doc syntax that we use, you have to escape nothing to make that happen. So you can use single quotes and double quotes and all sorts of cool things that you want, and all of that will actually be sent down, down into the browser um, as emitted JavaScript. In, in some ways, if you're familiar with GreaseMonkey, you could take what GreaseMonkey does, drop it into a JavaScript emit, deploy it as a bookmarklet, and now have the ability to run something like GreaseMonkey with all of the power <coughs> of the kinetics engine behind it with almost no effort to make that happen. So it's pretty cool stuff. Um, so you can do anything with JavaScript emits. Now, cross-browser stuff now becomes your problem because you, you, you've bled through, to, through the abstraction and now you're, you're leaking directly into JavaScript space and so you need to be careful what you do here. Um, we do take steps to prevent variable leakage from your emitted JavaScript code into the page and we actually execute all of this code inside of a closure, which means that your code runs and then any temporary variables that you have declared vanish as the, as the closure finishes executing and it doesn't populate out into the main namespace of the page. If you want to put something into the namespace of the page, you have to do that explicitly, but that, that is allowed in our, in our JavaScript here. So cross-browser compatibility becomes your problem, but we haven't left you completely helpless. We have embedded within the, the, uh, the Kinetics JavaScript runtime that is sent down to the browser when Kinetics runs, the entire base jQuery library for your use. So this gives you the ability to use all of the standard J jQuery features and all of the cool things that we do. In fact, many of our things are powered by jQuery because they've done a rip rock and awesome job of handling the cross-browser compatibility issues for us and we wanted to leverage uh, their, their efforts as, as, as part of what we do. Now, if we just injected jQuery into every page that you were doing this on, it would break all sorts of websites. There's a known incompatibility, for example, between the prototype library and the JavaScript library because they both make heavy use of the dollar sign uh, function. And so, yeah, I heard a laugh. So what we do is we run jQuery in what's called compatibility mode, which pulls back from the dollar sign function, and we have, we have renamed um, the dollar sign function inside of, for the jQuery library to dollar sign K. So if you call dollar sign K and then any of the standard syntax for jQuery, you will get the jQuery libraries that are there. Another important note is that we do not, on the day of a jQuery release, typically update to the newest jQuery library, but, but that's an easy thing to roll in and test at this point for us. And so after it's been out for a couple of days, we've played with it, and, uh, and it's worth running our test, and we'll run the test and then go ahead and wrap it into the library so that you have the newest version of jQuery. Um, but, uh, but be aware that there may not always be a one-to-one -one parity between the newest release of jQuery and the version of jQuery included in the Kinetics Library. So we we'll have time to do our testing. The question is, is, do we wait until it's released why, before why we test? I mean, why not be tracking track uh, The question is, is why, why do we wait? Why don't we track development of jQuery in order to release it? 